Okay, we're going to move swiftly on, and uh, I'd like to invite uh, Claudia de Gavet to come and uh, introduce her topic on uh, this in planning and uh, knowledge as a framework for planning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to everyone, especially to being here after the party. And first of all, I would like to thank you, the organizer of the session, to giving us the possibility to talk of this very interesting subject. And I'm glad to listen to your presentation because it's in line with, with what you're thinking about. <laughs> okay, it <Doesn't> works, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about Aosta. Aosta is a uh, historical city located in the Valley d'Aosta region, nearly the Mont Blanc and between France, Switzerland and uh, uh, the region of Piemonte. The archaeological records in this city cover a long period from the 5th millennium before Christ through the proto-historic proto periods until the foundation of the Roman colony of Augusta Pretoria. Obviously not forgetting a long traditional of the medieval times as you can see from all the symbols in this distributional map. For this reason, cultural heritage bodies, the superintendences, have created the, what you see on this plan, the areas of archaeological interest to control modern developments inside the limits of the Roman city you see on the right, along the main roads that are from the north, in the north and in the west in this plan and where the excavation work recognized archaeological sites ever recognized archaeological sites in the past. But in, in the last decade, fortunately, we have the possibility to follow some major development projects. The first one, for example, for the enlargement of the hospital, we are talking in another session about this. The Testafaki project for the enlargement, uh, the new construction of the university, and also some large archaeological projects have been undertaken and some are still going on in the city and outside the city. But we are focusing now in a, um, a project, in the, in the Tasha project, what, what you see in red in this plan, that was a, a project for the creation of the new central heating, uh, heating system of the city that has involved the western and northern parts of the outside part of the city, sorry, outside the Roman walls. In this contribution, we'll focus on this. Respecting the needs of preventive archaeology, this project was preceded by an assessment study, and the map with different levels of archaeological risk was supplied to the developers and also to the Subintendenza. A continuous archaeological assist assistance was undertaken during the pose of the new pipelines. I put evidence on the fact that the plan that you see um, in, this, in, this, uh, in this picture is made mostly on positive data sets because the old archaeological documentations for areas with no result is, only, is always totally um, is only always absent. There's nothing about it. <clears throat> and unfortunately, also the positive data, sometimes the levels and the location of finds are not really well recorded. So we can't use them or we know around where they are around, but not exactly the position, especially the level from the surface. This project, therefore, was a real occasion to organize all this data in this part of the city. That's all, as you see, it's all a modern city now, so it's not a, a, a free landscape. Here are some images of the two meters wide trenches around the city of the Telsha project. The total length until now is of about five kilometers, but the project is still going on. And here in this slide, some of the archaeological finds. So we have burials, structures, roads, and on the right, also an Iron Age tumulus that unfortunately we couldn't dig because it was in the middle of one of the main streets of the city. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> All these finds as you see, represents only the 4% of the total investigated surface. So we have a 96% of blank areas. And obviously composed of blank sections, or rather sections with layers commonly identified as of no archeological interest, and so usually not documented. So what we have done, <laughs> We had to follow these trenches 
we didn't want to waste our time, obviously. <laughs> and so in our project, we analyzed and documented many of these sections in order to follow the transformation of our ancient landscape, landscape during the main archaeological periods. And here is an idea of what we found. Every section, obviously some samples of the sections, have been analyzed not only from an archaeological point of view, but also for the typology of terrain, for example, the morainic area, the delta area with its alluvial deposits and its very opal channels, and also for the presence or absence of cultivated fields. All these data were georeferenced in section and in plan to help reconstruct the areas of real absence of data. We, were, we are extremely fortunate in Aosta because the Roman levels are always clearly recognizable for their pottery content, even in the suburb, giving us effectively a great baseline, as you see in red in these sections. Then we analyzed the different data, putting together both the positive and the negative information. We were able to create a digital terrain model, and upon this, we reconstructed the ancient land use of the different areas. Here you see the protohistoric and Roman phase as an example, with all the finds. The, the dots and the signs of the fans that we already knew before and after this project, obviously. A first result of this approach using negative data sets is that at the end of the process, we can now delimit the area of archaeological interest in this part of the city in a much more effective way than before. And developing this idea, we added the so-called cantina or cellar survey to analyze areas where modern building had destroyed completely the archaeological deposits. So in this plan you see, in white, the zone of real no risk, at all, uh, totally destroyed by modern uh, constructions. And going further, we use the important guideline of the depth of Roman deposit be beneath the Roman surface, a surface that nowadays is quite horizontally, but in the past it was very differently, obviously. And uh, with the GIS system and some, some statistical uh, system, we recreate the plan that you see on the top, le uh, top left, and we mix the two plans. In conclusion, now to this, we can overlay every type of plan and of every new development project in a more accurate way, obviously. In conclusion, using the information of black areas, we have created a very important tool to control and preserve the archaeological deposits. And adding the data of land use for every period, we could also decide where we want to do a better control in order to, to answer specific archaeological questions for every, period, for every period, if a proposed development project crosses these areas. But our problem is, to do this, we need to impose a certain standard of archaeological documentation of blank areas. We have highly motivated archaeologists in our trenches, but from the point of view of our company, the job is time consuming and not well paid. So our question is, how can we simplify the data collection process without reducing quality? Maybe creating a minimum standard checklist for question and answer sheets for archaeologists who encounter black areas during black areas during everyday work, following the trenches required by preventive archaeology. Doing this, all these negative data sets can become a great instrument for future planning and also good value for money. Thank you.